Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Another chapter in the House impeachment melodrama unfolded today about the 18th most important thing happening in America, but we're in Washington. It happened, and so we're going to frame it for you this evening. So the drama shifted from Adam Schiff's Judiciary Committee, I mean, rather, Intel Committee, to the Judiciary Committee, which is run by another Democratic member of Congress, Jerry Nadler of New York. Now, last month, you'll remember that Adam Schiff's approach was to bring down the president by bringing in a whole cavalcade of intel and foreign policy professionals and having them explain how their feelings had been hurt by the bad orange man. The president said nasty things about me. He fired me. I wanted to cry. Make him go away. It didn't work. So Jerry Nadler tried a new approach today. His strategy was to treat impeachment like a faculty meeting at Wesleyan. So produce a long line of academics with impressive sounding credentials, have them condemn the president as a very bad man. Now, if you weren't paying close attention, if you were standing in a line at the cafeteria and just saw it out of the corner of your eye, you might have been impressed. That was the idea. Watch. The evidence reveals a president who used the powers of his office to demand that a foreign government participate in undermining a competing candidate for the presidency. If we are to keep faith with our Constitution and with our republic, President Trump must be held to account. If Congress fails to impeach here, then the impeachment process has lost all meaning. I stand with the Constitution, and I stand with the framers who were committed to ensure that no one is above the law. On the basis of the testimony and the evidence before the House, President Trump has committed impeachable high crimes and misdemeanors by corruptly abusing the office of the presidency. Oh, yeah. That sounds bad. And as you just heard, the framers would frown upon it. What would they think specifically? Well, fortunately, Jerry Nadler asked that question, and witness Noah Feldman had an answer. Here it was. If uh, Washington were here today, if he were joined by Madison and Hamilton and other framers, what do you believe they would say if presented with the evidence before us about President Trump's conduct? I believe the framers would identify President Trump's conduct as exactly the kind of abuse of office, high crime and misdemeanor that they were worried about. Uh huh. Madison, Hamilton, Washington. These are basically the same people the left would like to see dethroned. Their statues knocked over by screaming college kids. They must be very bad men. So presumably, if even they think Trump is rotten, then impeachment, mandatory. Of course, once you pause and consider this all for a moment, it starts to look a little less impressive. None of today's witnesses had any actual evidence against the president. They were instead giving you their opinions. It was a little bit like reading The New Republic, but less interesting. You probably heard enough impeachment opinions over Thanksgiving from one of your drunk cousins. So why would we care what these people think? Hmm. Well, because of their credentials. Supposedly, they have exceptional knowledge and expertise, IQs far higher than yours, all of which enables them to give a fair and balanced and informed opinion on how America ought to proceed. But is that real? Well, consider today's star witness, Pam Carlin. Look up her biography online, and you'll see that she's the, quote, Kenneth and Harley Montgomery Professor of Public Interest Law at Stanford. Whoa, stand back, ladies and gentlemen. And before that, she clerked for a Supreme Court justice and earned not one, not two. Ladies and gentlemen, she earned three separate degrees at Yale. She's written several textbooks on constitutional law. If there's one person in this country who is impressive, who our system has deemed capable of making judgments that you don't even understand, it's this lady, this professor, Pamela Carlin. But think again. And this is a sub-theme of the impeachment drama that we'd like to highlight, because really it's the thing that will endure and change the country long after Trump is gone. It turns out the more you know about the people you're supposed to consider impressive, the more you find out they're not impressive at all, <laughs> actually. They're not very smart. They have no wisdom. Their personal lives are a disaster. By the way, if they're so wise, why are they so unhappy? Every one of them is. And in this specific case, they're not even unbiased arbiters. Carlin, for example, she's not some apolitical academic pulled out of cold storage to testify about what we ought to do. She's an activist. She's literally a political activist who donates thousands of dollars to the Democratic Party. Watch this. Professor Carlin, you gave 2,000 bucks, or you gave 1,000 bucks to Elizabeth Warren, right? Uh, I believe so. You gave 1,200 uh, bucks to Barack Obama? 
I have no reason to question that. And you gave 2,000 bucks to Hillary Clinton? That's correct. So does donating to Democrats prove that Carlin is wrong? No, it doesn't, actually. She proved that herself. <laughs> she made it very clear that she was incapable of clear thinking or wise judgments. Instead, she made bizarre claims. She claimed that delaying military aid to Ukraine was just like cutting off rescue services to Americans after a hurricane. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like insane and dumb, by the way. She also engaged in embarrassing political stunts like ridiculing the president's teenage son. What? What comparisons, Professor Carlin, can we make between kings that the framers were afraid of and the president's conduct today? The Constitution says there can be no titles of nobility. So while the president can name his son baron, he can't make him a baron. <laughs> Thank you. The founding. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how long they practiced that one in the mirror. It was petty and dumb. Not surprising, though. Carlin has made remarks like this before. She previously suggested that Jeff Sessions was evil. Why? Because of the name his parents gave him. What a mediocrity. In 2006, well before the rest of the left embraced the great awakening, Carlin was ahead of the game. She was already bashing people on the basis of their sex, skin color, and sexual orientation. Watch this. We have to seize back the high ground on patriotism and on love of our country because we have more reason than they do to love America. The rich, pampered, prodigal, sanctimonious, incurious, white, straight sons of the powerful do pretty well everywhere in the world, and they always have. This lady needs a shrink. The sons of the powerful, really? <laughs> You're a law professor at Stanford and you're lecturing other people about how they're powerful? Right. This is the legendary scholar coming down from on high to tell us who is good and who is evil. Please. What a mediocrity. What a moron. Her fellow witnesses were almost as embarrassing. Noah Feldman, the, quote, Felix Frankfurter professor of law at Harvard Law School, told lawmakers that he was skeptical of impeachment until this past summer, suggesting, of course, that his endorsement was more legitimate. He's not political. But it turns out that was a lie. It was a lie. How do we know? Because all the way back in March of 2017, the same man, Noah Feldman, suggested that Trump should be impeached because of a tweet he sent accusing President Obama of monitoring Trump Tower. Yeah, that was impeachable, he said. He also said that Jim Comey's memo of his conversations with Trump was impeachment-worthy, too. He even told Slate.com, please, if he's so impressive, why is he writing for Slate? Whatever. But he told Slate that the president doesn't actually have the freedom of speech and should be impeached simply for saying things that Noah Feldman doesn't like. Okay. The only witness who didn't embarrass himself today was Georgetown University law professor Jonathan Turley. Now, reporters are describing Turley as a GOP witness, implying that he's a partisan or a right winger or a Republican even, but he's none of those things. Turley, who has come on the show quite a bit, know him well, is a member of the Democratic Party. He's on the left. He's advocated legalizing polygamy. He wanted George W. Bush tried for war crimes. He's not. He's not from the Federal Society. He doesn't even like Trump. He didn't vote for him. But he called an absurdity where he saw one. I'm not a supporter of President Trump. I voted against him. My personal views of President Trump are as irrelevant to my impeachment testimony as they should be to your impeachment vote. I get it. You're mad. The president's mad. My Republican friends are mad. My Democratic friends are mad. Will a slipshod impeachment make us less mad? Will it only invite an invitation for the madness to follow every future administration? That is why this is wrong. It's not wrong because President Trump is right. His call was anything but perfect. It's not wrong because the House has no legitimate reason to investigate the Ukrainian controversy. It's not wrong because we're in an election year. There is no good time for an impeachment. No, it's wrong because this is not how you impeach an American president. Well, exactly. And that's really all it is. Everyone in Washington is mad about something. And in a mentally fragile age like this one, everyone requires a nuclear response. Donald Trump thinks Haiti isn't a nice country. He's a racist! He wants to have a border around our country? Bigot! He thinks it's suspicious when the corrupt do-nothing son of the former vice president gets millions of dollars from a big company in one of the world's most corrupt nations, Ukraine? You must impeach him! <laughs> Washington may be the most powerful city in America, and at the same time, it is full of sad people 
grasping for things to complain about that they hope might give meaning to their dreary lives. This morning, one Democrat even complained about the witnesses who were testifying, not because they were biased or unqualified or irrelevant, not because they were off track or had bad ideas, but because they were the wrong color. It hurts my heart, Mr. Speaker, to see the Judiciary Committee hearing experts on the topic of impeachment and not one person of color among the experts. Permanent Washington thinks it wants impeachment. What they really want, what they definitely need, is psychological help.